what I want to think about is what does BYOD actually mean to me? And for me, it's about how do I control who and what accesses the network? It's actually a problem that isn't new. We've had this for quite some time, right? It's just become much more complex because of the proliferation of, of, uh, of devices and the consumerization of IT. And again, before I touch on those, um, those building blocks, what I want to understand from you guys is this BYOD thing, it's a journey. And I need to understand where you are today and where you want to get to tomorrow. The big issue is I can't point to these things here. So I'm going to use Cisco as a little bit of an example, and I'm going to go off to the side here. But Cisco was way over there in Limited um, about four and a half years ago. And the only thing I was allowed to use inside Cisco was a Lenovo laptop running Windows 7 and a BlackBerry phone. That's it. Done. Our chief security officer at the time decided to audit. He wanted to know who and what was on the network. And he found 4,500 MacBooks on the network. And they weren't supposed to be there. So it's like, right, do I start my BYOD journey here? And that's exactly what happened to us. Now, four and a half years later, we're probably in the middle of what I would call enhanced. OK, I'm allowed to choose a MacBook, or I'm allowed a Lenovo running Windows 7, and I can actually bring any tablet or smartphone device into Cisco. Now, it's quite possible that your today state is somewhere in enhanced, and you want to actually move backwards to basic or even limited to try and grab control of your network. It's quite possible that you might want to say, I don't want to do BYOD. It's just, just nothing. I don't want to deal with it. The issue is, is you've got to work out is how to stop BYOD from happening to you. So, and the first way to do that is to work out what your policy is. Because policy is going to drive a lot of behaviors. Things like, are you going to be reactive or proactive with this transformation? So what does reactive mean? Reactive is where your employees are bringing devices, they're connecting them, and you just have to deal with it. In the case of proactive, you're actually working what out, uh, out what applications are going to help empower your business. And you're going to build to that. But there's a ton of stuff here. Right? We've got security, compliance, privacy, data protection, data sovereignty. Um, oh, there's a ton of stuff. And you've got to work all of that out even before we start this journey. So let's have a look at those five essential building blocks. So the first one is what I would call unified network access. So what's that about, JP? Well, unified network access is where I want to treat my wired, my wireless, and my VPN as purely access to my network and access to the resources. I want a single policy that can govern behavior across any network that is used to access. I then want to think about security. Now remember, this is a talk about BYOD. So that means this device is not owned by the corporation. It's owned by the employee, and you are not the administrator. The employee is. Therefore, they can do whatever they want with it. So if I'm going to allow that to attach to my corporate network and allow to transact, I want to make sure that every packet that leaves this device is going to go th through some sort of security gateway. Okay? So I'm talking firewall, IPS, content security, web email, all those sorts of things. And I also want to make sure that when that leaves the building and they try to come back and talk to protected resources, that they're going to be able to do that across a, a good VPN or, or remote access solution. Now, identity and policy. This is the, the next building block is, I want to change the way I manage this. This is not a MAC address anymore. It's an iPad. I'm not something. I'm a user. I'm John Paul. I want to write a policy that actually says John Paul can use his iPad to access his email and internet. I want to make it that simple. And this is where we're changing the difference between MAC addresses and IP addresses and managing networks. And speaking of management, I want a single pane of glass that's actually going to work across all of those other building blocks, identity, unified network, and security. I'd also want to tie in, how do I manage these? And that's really our MDM solution, our mobile device management. I say our, I mean, it's, there's a lot of them around. Um, and of course, applications. Applications are what is going to change this into well, probably a chopping board or a paperweight into something that is actually beneficial to our business. So I'm going to run through these. Oh, um, it's taken us four and a half years, by the way, for Cisco to get on our journey. And we've actually created a lot of technologies to help us solve our own internal problems. And we've taken those out to the market. We've actually created an architecture that we call SecureX. Now, it's a terrible name, I know, but it is an architecture. And it's working. So I'm going to jump in and take some call outs from each of those, uh, those building blocks. The first is, let's get the wireless right. If I'm going to use that as a business tool, I need to make sure I'm delivering quality of service. And I'm going to talk about a couple of um, 
points that I want to try and think of and solve just outside of providing data to these devices. Number one, things like how do I deal with interference in my network? Right? Wireless is a shared spectrum. I need to be able to control that. Cisco's actually got some solutions called Clean Air where we can actually work around interference. Another one is I want to make sure the network that I build is actually proactive for these kinds of devices. We have a technology that we call Client Link, which actually amplifies the signal to these kinds of devices. Why is that useful? Well, actually, it means that these have to retry the signal a lot less, and we actually get an improvement of about 25 to 35% of battery life on these kinds of devices. So that's pretty cool. I also want to understand what applications these things are actually pushing across the network. And I want to control them before they go into my corporate or my wired network or even my data center. So I need to make sure I've got application visibility and control, or ABC. And finally, if we do get the wireless right, we want to make an investment to make sure that we can actually, well, leverage our investment. Have you guys heard of a technology called 802.11ac? Yeah, most of you. 11ac is where we're going to move from 450 megabits per second to gigabit Wi-Fi. And sitting behind that is another technology called 11AD, which will take us over about 4 gig of, uh, of utilization on the, on the Wi-Fi. That's huge. The 3600s actually have a modular radio. You can actually replace the radio in them and be able to uh, pump out those kinds of data rates. The next building block, security. Secure every packet. Now, I'm going to call out um, application management here. Um, a lot of us are having to actually decide that Facebook is now a business-critical tool. That's how we communicate. I mean, ASB, for example, communicates with its, with its customers across Facebook. So we're going to have to say Facebook is actually a valid application I need to let into my network. But there's some stuff in there that I don't want. Things like games. I don't really want my users playing games. So I want to put some level of control on that. Yes, you can go to Facebook. Yes, you can do a status update. You can like something if you really need to. But actually, I'm going to block you from playing games. You can watch some videos. You can see what the guys did on the weekend. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop you from uploading any type of material to Facebook that's a file or a video or a recording, OK? Because that's now in breach of my data loss prevention policy. Another quick example there is we've all got Apple uh, iPads, et cetera. I want to be able to connect to iTunes. I want to be able to sync my apps, make sure I'm running the latest version of, of whatever it is. But I'm going to block people from downloading movies and music during business hours. Number one, it's you know, downloading The Hobbit is, what, about four and a half gig in HD? And I'm probably going to sit there for three and a half hours watching it as soon as I've downloaded it. <laughs> the next thing I'm going to do is actually when I leave my, uh, my office, my iPad is automatically going to create a VPN because I've moved from a trusted network to untrusted. Not that XT is untrusted, but in my, my eyes it is. So it's going to create a VPN for me and I can continue working. Now, if that does time out and I'm down at the cafe and I've got my latte, um, what I can do is I can just try and access resources that are inside Cisco, and it's going to connect on demand for me. It's uh, second from the bottom there. And it's just going to create a VPN and allow me to continue working. No user interaction required. That just makes my life easy. That's what BYD is the fun stuff about. So the next thing is I want to turn a, 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 a security um, solution, which was what we call AAA. Now, hopefully, we all know what AAA is. Right? It's authenticate, authorize, and audit. I'm going to turn that into who, what, when, where, how. And I'm going to show that by an example. So over there, right on the, the far side or, or near side, there we go, I've got a guy who kind of looks like me, but he's a bit more handsome. Um, I want to run an application. I'm in the headquarters. It's 2.30 in the afternoon, and I'm living the dream. Right? I've got my, uh, my uh, MacBook Pro and my iPad. The first thing I want to do is I want to connect to the, the network. So I say, hey, network, uh, wireless, can I get on, please? And that goes and talks to a thing called Identity Services Engine, or ICE for short, ISE. ICE is going to come back and say, sure, but first tell me who you are. This is the authenticate piece. So I say, hey, look, it's John Paul, and here's my password, and I authenticate. ICE is then going to say, OK, but just hold on. Before I give you an IP address, what kind of device are you on? Well, well look, it's, it's an iPad. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, before, still, before I give you an IP address, what's the status of that iPad? Is it jailbroken? Are you running MDM? Do you have the right security controls in place before I let this on the network? And now when I have that information, who you are, what you are, what the status is, is it the right time of day and are you coming in from the right network? I can then decide to let you onto the network. So I'm going to make that policy decision and I'm going to enforce that in the network itself. 
And that could be full, it could be partial, it could be no access. I could just simply push you off the network and you can't associate with the AP again. That's what it's all about. And this is how we write that policy. Who, what, which, where, when, and what policy do we apply? It really gets that simple. Now I want to get, look at the management layer. And again, I'm going to mention MDM, but it's not all about MDM. We want to make sure we've got that single pane of glass so we can see wireless LAN, LAN, and WAN in, in one place. And I want to be able to manage it as a single thing. And I'm just going to pull out a quick example. This is a picture from um, Prime Infrastructure where I'm managing the wireless network. And I can actually use the wireless network to triangulate where interference is so I can send the IT admin to go and actually get rid of that. I've got that uh, demoing downstairs if you want to have a look at that in action. Of course, MDM is a critical part of how we actually do our BYOD solution. So if we partner with Genai, of course, and the, uh, the Genai Managed Mobility Services, they've chosen a couple of products to, to go to market with, which is AirWatch and Good, and they are fantastic products. If you've already made a buying decision and you've bought Mobile, Iron, or Zenprise, then that's cool too, because our identity services engine will talk to all of those and work out whether you're actually compliant with your MDM policy. By the end of the year, we'll have pretty much every other MDM vendor there. And as I say, MDM is important, but MDM is, is exactly what it is. It's part of the name. It's mobile device management. It's about managing the device. But there's a ton of stuff that we have to work out on top of that before we run off and call that a BYOD strategy. Things like, how do I onboard it? How does someone with a brand new iPad bring that into the, co the company and get this to work properly? And we figure the first place that you actually touch is the network, so that sounds like a pretty good place to actually onboard a device. And we do exactly that. We have what we call zero-touch onboarding. As you enter the network, you put in your credentials. It says, would you like to onboard the device? And, you make, and we make sure that we check it so the device is fine, et cetera, um, and it's a, a trusted device, and away we go. We also have a, a, a self-service model, so if you actually lose it, you can actually class it as lost. Or if you need to delete private data, you can do that too. Finally, the applications. This is where I want to turn this into something else. I want to change, for example, my iPhone into a phone. OK, sorry, not the best example. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to be able to um, work with Glenn, who's going to show you an example of, of Jabber downstairs. I want to be able to chat with him. I want to call with him. Or potentially, he needs to share his desktop, so I want to jump onto a WebEx call with him. That's all good. I can do that. But we need to think about how we take an application that's going to change the way we do business. Because this is where the ROI is. This is what's going to change how we work. And this is one that's changed my life in the way that it's changed the way I fly. So this is Air New Zealand's impasse. I hope you guys have got this application, because if you're on Air New Zealand, it's absolutely fantastic. Basically, when I walk up to the aircraft, I turn on this application. It turns that into a boarding pass. Bleep, and I walk onto the aircraft. It's fantastic. But that's the kind of thinking we need to think about. Right, so what are those solution elements? Just in conclusion, unified network access. Actually, Cisco's pretty good at that stuff. We're pretty good at wireless and switches and routers. Security and remote access. And again, we're pretty good at that stuff too. Identity and policy. Identity services engine. The only thing out there that can actually manage your wired wireless and VPN policies. Management, tie that in with your MDM. As I say, we want to get those single panes of glass. And of course, applications. This is what we're striving for. This is the, where the money is. This is the good stuff. Okay. We've actually got a couple of our own, but it's up to you and what your business needs to be able to drive those applications. Of course, we do this all in the network, so I don't really care what device you're on, whether it's Windows 8, whether it's Android, whether it's um, iOS. It'll all work.